<clears throat> so on this episode of Is It an Any or Is It an Audi? I mean, any given Thursday. Um, any. I'm Rob, also any. <laughs> <laughs> I'm any. And he's any. And he, yeah. And I'm Kevin. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, parentheses, any. I don't think there's a lot of outies out there. There's, well, Rob, I'm, I'm not going to speak for you. Yeah. But I'm going to a little bit speak for you and mostly speak for me. Sure. You know, when you have that extra protection there, it's hard to know. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you lost me for what? Well, you know, you get a lot of extra protection in the belly. Area. Oh, okay. So like, Got there, it. it could be an Audi, like all the way back there. You got it. There's a good amount of extra. On no, because the there, there are full figured fellows with Audis. Yeah, but from my understanding. Yeah, but they also have Roy bellies. That sounds plausible. You know, so it's is is it the Roids or is it an Audi? <laughs> right, like that's the, the age old is, question. Is that the real question? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, so okay. Kind of. So Rob. I wanted to bring up tangentially something that we both enjoy and have been talking about a lot lately, actually. Something we both enjoy. Yeah. Something we've been talking about a lot lately. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Something we both enjoy, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. We've been talking about a lot that we both enjoy. I know, right? We talk about a lot of things. We don't always both enjoy them. No, usually we talk about what we don't enjoy, actually. More often than we talk about the things we both enjoy. Yeah. Alright, so this is gonna this is gonna be a potentially an incredibly positive episode. Oh, it's only tangentially about it, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well hey, that's that, uh, I have no idea what something that we've been talking about recently that we both enjoy. Oh no. Um I mean I run through the list of the things that we talk about weekly, right? Work. We don't enjoy that. No, no, not really. Um I mean, sometimes, but oof. Eh, we don't enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> let's, you know, let's generalize things, right? Generalize. Okay. Um, look at you go, huh? This has got some pipes on you. No. Um, we talk about that. We we talk about sex, baby. We talk to, about you. To, and to me, to we talk about sex. <laughs> do we? <laughs> no, I was just, well, you sang, and then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, like, the, oh, okay. You know. Sure. Yep. Uh, and no, I, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about and around. Social events. D&D. Okay. Not the same thing. No, there's a clear capitalist motivation to D&D. Well, the owners of it, for sure. Well, no, but also the players are mostly just trying to treasure hunt. Uh, it depends on the theme of the campaign. Some of them are trying to cause socialist revolutions. I don't think I've ever heard of a campaign of D&D that's just trying to cause a socialist res- res- resolution. Revolution? Ah, uh, damn it. Copy. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought we were doing pretty okay. I mean, we're two times down. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, so besides us being in an active D campaign, but yeah, to we be are fair, we're... Together. Yeah, 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 yeah. With other friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Neither of us are the DM. Uh, no. No, no, no. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. We've been playing um, D&D for... Years. Years? I don't know. Six, seven years. One, two, three. Well, it's three. For four. this one. This one isn't three. I don't know. I, we played the other one for like four or five. Oh, we played the other one for three. And this is like two. It might be, I think we're between five and six. We've been playing a little while. We took a little gap right there. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a gap here. Um, At least five years. I'd say bare minimum five. So, we've been playing a little while. Boy, we're only in a year and a half in this one. I don't know. I have no. I, do. I really have no idea. I that do. doesn't sound right. No, it's a little over, maybe not even a year and a half, because 
um, I have notes from our one year like anniversary session of I, the campaign. I thought we started when I lived in uh, the apartment with Jaron M. No. No, not in Henry's campaign. Hmm, okay. No, that we've been doing it for. It's, it's been a year and a couple months. I don't remember when the one year anniversary was, but I have it in my notes that it okay. was, it's been one year since. Uh, it might have been last September or something like that. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. could be misremembering, but I think it was around there, maybe August. Regardless. Regardless. Um, of the nuances of this. Um, we've been playing a little while. Yeah, a little while. Uh, we're not, you know, inexperienced, but we're, we, I feel like we, we were nerds, right? We, we've been the target audience for you, a while. You said we're just there. We are. Oh, okay. I heard were, and no, I was, that's no, what I was questioning. No, no, no. We are the, we are nerds. Yes. We, we've been the target audience for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel as though... As a whole, it's become pretty popular. It's become more popular than I would have guessed it to have been, even when we started playing. Well, yeah. There's a lot of reasons behind this. I, well, that's part of what we're going to talk about here today. Oh, okay. Is, is I'm the... coming to this slightly knowledgeable, I'll have you know. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, then maybe you can spread some light on me. I'll, I'll, I don't I'll, know. I'll, I'll spread you with light, Rob. I'll spread my light all oh, over God you. Damn it. I did say that in such a way, didn't I? Um, no. Okay. So, like, um, me and Jackie have been watching Stranger Things again recently. Nice. And uh, I'm yeah. still behind. Probably no one here. Yeah. Well, it's on Netflix, and I don't watch Netflix. Right. So. Sure. Um, but it started in the early, it, it takes place in the early ish eighties, yep. which is right when D and D came out. Mm -hmm. So and, panic, panic, uh, you know, huge uh, outcry against it. People were summoning demons in their basements. Yeah, that sort of thing. And so it was really like a sheltered, cult, cultish, cult accused thing. It didn't. It wasn't widespread main media. Sure, for shit and sure. What? Well, so. Um, the, like, late 70s, early 80s was the first, like, explosion of D&D. &D. Okay. Uh, in a, which is, <clears throat> compared to what it is now, right. it, it's a, it's a mini bang at most, right? Uh, yeah, but, it's, it's like an M80 yeah. against a it, nuke. It may be a firecracker, even, you know, like. Sure. Like, we're, we're tiny, tiny, tiny. Tiny, tiny. Um, a cherry bomb. Uh, Ch -ch 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 cherry bomb. All right. Um, but like the original ones, like I mean, the games that like you know Gary Gygax and his play group were originally playing. No idea who that is. Uh, That's okay. You don't have to go for it. Okay. Um, founder, original writer of the game that morphed into and became D and D. Oh, okay. Yes. Like the 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 you know the classic. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to rephrase that, but yeah, so he is like credited as the founder of D&D. &D. Sure. Um, and like him and his friends, they mm -hmm. started off by playing war games. That's where everything is morphed into. It was war games where you, you know, actually just moved soldiers and tanks and whatnot. It's like almost like um, plastic soldiers that you, the, the little green soldiers that everybody played with as kids. Yep. It was non-fantasy Warhammer. Okay. Is what was like the very early beginner stuff. Sure. Um, and then that morphed into a focus on individual um, like people. TTA, like tabletop sort of uh, yeah. strategy games. Yeah. So that, well, even the, the focus on that was like, again, controlling an army. And then the shift goes down to still on the table, but you're controlling less people. And then it eventually gets to a focus on an individual person. And then like you being a character. Um, and again, okay. it, it was in the beginning, it was all history based still, right? So like you hmm. are 
so, Napoleon. So, you are like so almost like um, reenacting. Yes. But you're doing it in your house. Yes, in your house with a table and dice and minis. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of where all, like, where almost almost all tabletop games came from. So it started from history. Tabletop games. role-playing games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it was, you know... It makes sense why you like it so much. Risk on steroids <laughs> becomes... Dungeons and Dragons, inevitably, you know, introducing more fantasy uh, elements. Inevitably, uh, that was the wrong phrasing. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, ultimately, I don't know. Yeah, uh, okay, I mean, because those games still exist. Yeah, of but, or, well, not those, but you know, like well, games of that theme. I, I and bet that, they still you know. exist. So in some fashion, yeah. Yeah. Then you know, I'm just saying, like names and that may all be right, changed or slightly altered, but and so on and so forth. Um, but the, the core concept is still there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, and then you know, introducing fantasy elements, uh, and then when you know, first like official published things. I mean, we're talking um, was it Dragon Magazine? Oh no, that's not what it was called. Um, it was something, but there was it was a periodical that was published uh, that mm-hmm. that had like adventures basically for fantasy worlds. Um, so like you get into that, uh, and then eventually you get into the 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 red box, which was the you know um, kind of the the first like mass produced um, uh, like version of Dungeons and Dragons. And so that's kind of first edition. In a way, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I could be messing little things up here and there. Oh, there's going to be plenty but... of things to fact check on this one. Yes. Um, <laughs> at least with this part of it, of course. Yes. But um... like, that's the basic, right? Mm. So like with Stranger Things, mm. that was definitely still a crazy niche hobby, but it was that was when it was first starting to grow, the time period that it was set in. Is sure. when it was first really starting to grow. Expanding to a wider audience than just the initial guys who liked board games. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, fast forwarding a bit, because I feel like even then, like, it, I don't, it, it really wasn't until, like, the past, I'm going to even say, like, 10 years that Dungeons & Dragons has been able to, to nudge its way into mainstream culture. Yes. And so that's, I mean, what, 2014-ish? Yeah. Well, we'll you know, I'd give or take. 2010, 2011, I think, would be probably the start of the rise. Sure. But there's, okay, so there's like a 30-year gap there. Yeah. And it, and it's, <clears throat> I mean, it's still steadily growing. Of course. Um, I right. mean, you know, then you have the whole, like, TSR comes in, and then... Um, we, oh, that is so. There's a very basic overview. Um, you have Dungeons and Dragons, and then you have Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, two separate products. Uh, there's a oh. a split that occurs uh, amongst some of the original writers and creators, uh, and then one goes one way, one goes the other way. Sure. Um, TSR was the company mm-hmm. that produced. AD and D or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. um, and then they are the ones who ultimately went on were bought out by Wizards of the Coast, um, who were just doing like magic stuff. Uh, and so I want to talk about that for a little bit too. Okay. Um, I, I, you can continue, but like I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back to that one. Let you know. Okay. All right. So yeah. So Wizards, um, you know. Well, produces, or do they buy out? No, they were original producers of Magic the Gathering. Um, I think that sounds right. I, I don't know. And then they were uh, making good money off of it. Magic was a popular thing when it came around. It still is, right? Right. Um, but even when it came out, mm-hmm. it's it was popular. It grew mm-hmm. in popularity. Uh, and again, we're, you know, still a jump there from the 80s to... You know, ninety three, ninety four. Uh, right. There's well, but at the same time, uh, I feel like it grew a little bit more. Like there was a boom, 
but it was localized. Like it was more within niche groups. Yep. And then, you know, for like 10 years. Yep. And then we get into the 90s. Yep. And then Wizards, I think, bought TSR, I want to say, in the late 90s. Okay. I want, I could, I want to say it's around there. Late 90s, maybe, maybe 2000 was when they buy out um, the company that was running Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, created and were publishing for it. And you knew way more about this than I was anticipating. I was not expecting you to be able to do all this. So fair. Uh, and again, this is very general, you know, from, uh, from what I've learned. Sure. But basically, they were funneling the money they were making off of Magic mm-hmm. into uh, promoting and growing Dungeons and Dragons. Interesting. So that was initially what they were doing. They wanted to get. Uh, D and D more popular, mm-hmm. uh, and since they were already successful with the, with the other IP, they were going to just take some of those funds and put them into D and D. Sure. Um, this is around. Let's see. That was yeah, around two thousand, right around the year two thousand and two thousand one. Okay, so now I'm going to pause you and bring it back now, y'all. Okay, let's do it. So, because I feel like a few things happened in the 90s that kind of helped what's happening right now. Okay. Um, For one, magic took off. Yep. And not even nearly as it is now, but magic did take off pretty hard. Yes. But oddly, what I think helped to this boom of just general nerdy culture becoming as dang prominent as it is today is actually product in media out of japan okay so let me let me try and connect all this for okay. you yeah, yeah, yeah um so late 80s to really steadily growing throughout the 90s was um anime boom tsunami bring that kind of media into cartoon basically you know cartoons yeah. for um american kids yep as well as um, Magic started a card game. Mm-hmm. And obviously it was doing well in its groups, but what I think helped to bring the two together was Pokemon. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, I My initial belief is probably not... My initial belief is I don't know how much of an impact it had. But I'm curious about the prospect, uh, and I do want to hear more about why you think that is. So, okay. But, you know, Pokemon was the first anime-ish, and immediately helped spawn Yu-Gi-Oh!, which were two... Uh, no, I don't know about spawn, but they grew... Pokemon was the first anime? No, no, no. No, no, no. Hold on. But to hit as many... As wide a fan base. There were plenty of animes. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Pokemon did really well at appealing to kids. Yep. It made a game. Yep. And it gave card games. Yep. Which were still... It tiptoed into every market. It tiptoed into every market. So it got kids in the 90s interested in three things that I don't think were nearly as popular... In any of those facets, video games had a really strong footing at that point, and I think, yeah. and I think that the Pokemon games really helped there. And I think that yes. the anime was geared towards enough towards kids, yep. where okay, now we have two things feeding each other, almost like nothing has before. Yep. And on top of that, we're going to give them something to collect. We're going to throw cards into the mix. Well, you can't collect the actual Pokemon. So well, you got to gotta the catch cards. them all. Right. <laughs> um. So they threw a card game in, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't know a damn kid who played the Pokemon card game. No. But fucking everybody collected those things. Yeah. But, it was crazy. Yeah. But, to push back a little bit on that, um, card collecting like as a hobby, or card collectors been have a, existed for... A long time. A long time. At this point, over 100 years. Yeah. Right. I. Um, right. So I wonder how much is uh, it just became the next thing. I mean, people are still collecting sports cards. 
Uh, well, right, but and you, Pokemon cards, they match it, right, and everything now. But there's not a game to play with baseball cards. True. True. And if there is, it's not well known enough that I can fucking speak to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I never collected them, so I, I vaguely did. I vaguely collected a lot of things mm. at various Didn't points. Didn't Lou life. do it for a little while? Lou collected. Lou collected card game or um, sorry, baseball cards. Pretty heavily for a little while. He bought, sold them, the whole nine. Um, he, I don't know if he still does or not. Fair. Not nearly as much. Fair. Um, I bet he's going to get on, back into it later on. Yeah. He com- comes and goes in waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But it's one of those things that, you know, yes. So I'm not saying collector cards haven't. But again, I think that Pokemon did this thing where it, it kind of helped make the market more easily digestible for a new generation of kids. Fair. Um, and, like, Pokemon became the the cards to collect right. for kids. Right. Right? Like, and, much less so and, than baseball cards. Kids are still collecting baseball cards. Kids are still collecting baseball cards. But now a more wide variety of kids who maybe weren't into baseball yeah. were now collecting cards and trading them and if they got into it, there was also a game they could play with them. Yeah. So now we're getting... Even though no one did. No, not really. No. But I think that helped pave the way for Yu-Gi-Oh! And just helped increasing the nerds. As well as Toonami was like... I'm not... I can't not give it to Toonami. Oh, sure. That brought a whole generation of kids into anime. Yeah. And is probably why anime is also booming so hard right now. In yeah. America. Anime has been booming for a while overseas. Sure. It, yeah, in his birthplace, it was hugely popular. Right. R- right? I mean, like... Well, yeah, know, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying yeah. to... I'm not trying to... Okay, yes, I spoke... I, I, I stated <laughs> the obvious there. But I don't think that, like... Because there's still people who are like, ooh, anime. But, like, yeah. anime there is just TV. Right. It, it's normal. just... Yeah. And there are still, you know, more hardcore fans and less hardcore... But, but you know, like... And there's, it's not just anime there. It's, okay, what genre are you watching? Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, um, From my understanding. If I were to, if I were to like, I, I feel like if we were to try to find statistics on, like, um, Japanese citizens and, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like, the number of Japanese citizens that watch anime, right? I, like, I think... It'd have to be close to, like, 98%. Or, you know I, what I mean? I, like, I want to say, like, a, a crazy stat that Henry threw at me was that, like, over a quarter of the population was caught up on One Piece. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Like, that's... That's, that's it, It's an anime that's over a thousand episodes. Anything that's over a thousand episodes long. Yep. Like... Wild. Crazy, statistically. Yeah. For that much of a population to be yeah. behind it. Um, so, okay, so... 90s, Pokemon makes an impact. Mm-hmm. Dragon Ball does, but we're not talking about that right now. Okay. There, uh, there was Dragon Ball cards. There was. They have never taken off very well. No, not here at least. I don't know. If they uh, did. Yeah, I don't know about it. They elsewhere. may have in Japan or anywhere else, but mm-hmm. never really here. Um, I think the next two things that kind of helped in a way. Well, three things actually. I'm mm-hmm. into. Um, one of which I think helped the the D and D discussion that I'm going to get into more than the other two. Yeah. But, um, Beyblade, I'm going to mention briefly as the least impactful here. Okay, yeah. But it it was another one that was basically, like, marketing for kids. We're going to get them still into anime. Going to give them something to buy. Least impactful. Yeah, that's a very loose connection. I'm just, hold on. I'm not with you on that one. I know. Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm more with you on this one. Yu-Gi-Oh! is one where, okay, came out, doesn't have, it's had various video games, but let's be real here, it was the card game. Yeah. It was the card game, because that one was one that, okay, there's a show that I remember being decent, but for my (laughs) more recent back ventures into, no good. Um, Fair. But had a pretty solid card game. So now you got kids who are collecting cards. They already started collecting cards. Yep. Now they're starting to play games. Yep. And I think for 
um, and older. That that's what I think. Uh, like our age group helps flourish in this. Is that was Yu-Gi-Oh? Okay? Was Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. Okay. It gets uh, gets us into rules following with magic. It gets us into. I mean, there were. I mean, I remember there were kids at my school in like fourth, fifth grade that played magic. Sure. You know, like. Like, I remember uh, my friend Taylor. I know? collected magic cards in probably second and third grade myself. I didn't yeah. play it. Fair. Uh, uh, I, had a, I didn't think you could get anyone to play with them. Because I don't think anyone else really owned them. That's the but, thing, is I owned yeah. them, but who the hell am I going to play with? I had one other friend who had some. Yeah. Neither of us really knew the rules. Yeah. I got, like, a starter pack that gave me, like, a, a CD-ROM where you could do the same freaking battle over and over again. Cool. Yeah. Might even been a floppy, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm dating myself. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Hell yeah. <clears throat> but, like, I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! did it a little bit better in yeah. approaching kids. Yeah. Um, and Yu-Gi-Oh! was weird. I know, for me at least. Because uh, mm-hmm. we still didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, really? We collected. Oh, no. But... Like, yeah, like my friend group, we didn't really play. Oh, I had my, I had the, I went to like an after school, like day, like daycare after school program. Yeah, yeah, place. yeah. Um, and everybody, hmm. everybody there was playing. Don't think we got any of the rules fucking right. Definitely not for the Egyptian God cards, but we were in sure. that <laughs> yeah. Um, it, but it, <clears throat> you know, I remember a lot of us playing. And I think that that helped. And I think the third thing that kind of helped throw this a bit yep. was the rise of JRPGs. Okay. Because I think that it helped uh, American RPGs take off. Yep. Um, and I think that, like, most of the Final Fantasy games helped a lot. Yep. But Final Fantasy Seven was an immensely popular game. Mm-hmm. And it got everybody who wasn't into it but was into video games just fucking fed into that shit. Yep. I don't know if it was because of crashes on Sephiroth or Cloud. I could have been either of those. Both. Um, <laughs> it could have been the <laughs> gameplay. It's really hard to say. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, between, you know, anime coming into it and becoming more normalized, um, card games giving us something physical to play more that was you know a little bit a-traditional and then we have RPGs growing separately over in video games for a while. Yep. Did you uh, list those in order of least to most impactful in your mind? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. Because that is what I believe. I, 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 the way that you presented them, like anime cards, anime cards, RPGs, JRPGs, JRPGs, is the from least impactful to most impactful is probably the way that I would argue it. Why? Okay. Um, I would because I definitely think JRPGs have the most impact um, because it it is what led to like them being ported to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, is what led to the creation of like the Elder Scrolls game. And so that is the next big milestone that, in my mind, I was like, holy shit, wait, what? Is when Skyrim came out. Yeah. So Skyrim came out, and I remember kids at school talking about it. 2010? It was either, this is going to sound weird, it was either 2008 or 2011, I think. Uh, and I think it's it's not 11. I thought it was 11. I thought it was 10. I think, I think, oh, it, was, oh, I think it was, it might have been December. No, it was 11, 11, 11. 11, 11, 11 yep. is, it was 11. is when Skyrim came yep. No. No. It was out before that. It had to be. I am. I remember talking. I'm pretty positive it was 11, 11, 11. Oh, it was senior year. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I remember talking with my, my buddies at lunch about it and, like, what we were doing. No, it had to be at lunch. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways. I think it was 11, 11, 11. Okay. And, I mean, I had been playing Fallout and things for a little while. Yeah. But I remember 
Skyrim came out, I didn't have it yet. I remember all the kids who like only played sports games and mm-hmm. stuff. Every everybody was playing it. Yeah. And I mean it was it's, everyone owned it. Every, everyone played it. Everybody owned it. Everybody played it. Yep. Single player game. This isn't Call of Duty that like also swept in a whole other different impactful sort of manner. Yep. This isn't um like Madden and four uh, and FIFA. All right, now you got me. That had a whole other range of everybody being like, oh, I can I can make my team and yeah. play the thing I play. Yeah, it wasn't the SmackDown versus Raw video games, or the <laughs> it, Here Comes the Pain. <laughs> no, but, but really, though, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it was the first, like, like single-player RPG game that I remember was just cross the board. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, I saw, sure, they had earlier installments, but no, they not did. everyone bought into it no. as hard as everyone bought into Skyrim. And immediately. Yeah. And I remember the first time I played Skyrim. I, I knew like nothing about it. I was like, this is incredible. Yep. Um, and I and I think it's that a, it's a buggy mess, but well, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But like the first time I I played, I kicked it on my Xbox three hundred and sixty, and those graphics that are now pixely as shit. I remember yep. walking into the first like in the dungeon, you cross through, and there's like a freaking beam of light that comes down in this like snowy in between dungeon area. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, yep. Came I got I got my I got it for Christmas and I got the guidebook with it. That's cool. Um, and so yeah, back when I still got guidebooks. <laughs> yeah, back, yeah, which back that when was that was probably amazing. one of the last. Yeah, it, it probably was. It was probably one of the last that was like meaningfully bought. Yeah, and still had such an impact. Yeah, because I mean that I didn't have it, um, but like. After that point, I mean, when Skyrim, well, the, when Skyrim was released, everything was on the internet already. But, yeah, it just wasn't super friendly. Yeah, the internet still was not. not as, I disagree. I disagree. Not as much as it is, as it is now. Not as much as it is now. But way, I mean, the way like ten was still like we were, you know. Oh, I was in the internet for longer than I should have been, and for things I shouldn't have been on it for. Yeah, but it. We it, all are. <clears throat> but like video game guides and things were like weird forums. And, like, they aren't the kind of, like, wikis and, like, flat-out guide websites that we have now. Yes, I agree. Like, it was only a couple of years before that there were still video game cheap books coming out. Yeah. At freaking book fairs, you know? Yeah. Well, you could, but it was the point in time where you could find all those cheat codes online. It was. In, it was. In, in, you know, yeah, potentially sketchy places. Potentially sketchy places, or like potentially sketchy information, or like it wasn't the easiest to, to digest. Yes, and that guidebook that. was top tier. And honestly, uh, trying to replace it very expensive these days. Really? I found that out last Christmas. I, I so <clears throat> again, Skyrim RPG. Yeah, bit nerdy, but well integrated with everything. Yep. I mean, Fallout Three was very popular. Yes, but Vegas was very. Popular. New Vegas was incredibly popular. Yeah. Partially because Fallout 3 was. And I might be glancing over the impact that Fallout 3 had, to be honest, as an RPG. Fair. But Skyrim, I think, was the first one that I can really remember across, like... All spectrums. All spectrums of of people. Yeah. I don't know if it was because it was, like, Nordic and everybody just wants to be swinging a sword of shit. I don't know if there were dragons. Everybody just likes fucking dragons. I don't know what it was. Right. But it just hit right for most people. Yo, right. um, um, I'm gonna take us back. Sure, uh, I want to take us back to uh, about ten or maybe eleven years before Skyrim. Right, we're just sure. crossing into the early moments. Yep. Um, so around, as well, maybe a little later. I think it was 2003. 2000, it was 2003. 2002, 2003. When, um. Which of the coast now, right? They still own Magic. They own um, D and D. Things mm-hmm. are, are starting. Uh, the marketing is picking picking Acru- up around it. Accruing lots of money. Yes, uh, and using it again, as I said before, to really push D and D as an, as another product. Uh, this is also around the time that D and D was really they had a big slump. 
Okay. Early 2000s was a, a pretty big slump in players of D&D. Huh. Um, it, was, it was growing, 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 pumping some money into it, and then it really plateaued. Which is weird, because the other three things I mentioned that I think helped nerdiness in general yeah. were booming. Yes. So, I <clears throat> think the these they do work in tandem like it by working against each other yep. they actually help each other um okay. because people were focused on you know the you know three that you mentioned mm-hmm. um they were we were basically you know increasing the number of nerds in the yep. country in those ways uh and then when dd came back to popularity <clears throat> uh from very specific events that we'll we'll get to um then everyone was already more nerdy than they were <laughs> years ago. <clears throat> sure. Right? Um, but I think it was 2002, 2003 is when uh, the open gaming license was published. So this is when um, the core rules for D&D, uh, whenever they were released, they were released with this open license saying that any uh, creators now I know why you know so much about third this. party publishers <laughs> uh, can <clears throat> use the core rules yep. to expand into different areas for content, okay. right? And that was when it was at its slump. They did that because they wanted to bring in more creative people and create more hype around it, so that way more people could create related products and then grow the IP generally. There is one thing that I think. I overlooked. Okay. And you also didn't mention it. And the I... Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings films. 100%. How... Damn, you did it. Yep. Um... I, I can tell by the look in your eyes. I, it, just, <laughs> it just screamed Lord of the Rings, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but no, but really though. Yeah. It, I would put that over anime as well. Yeah, probably. But I do think it helps different... I think it helps different facets of things. Um... Yes. In... Western American culture, the Peter Jackson and Lord of the Rings movies are... Incredible. Well, they are incredible anyways, but pushed fantasy into into everyday life. Yes. Uh, as a genre. Yeah. It just blew that shit up there. Yep. I mean, those were... That, I, don't know. I would say... Um... I would go so far as to say Skyrim would not have blown up the way it did without those movies. Uh, no, no, no. There's no way. Yeah. I'd go so far as to say I don't know if Harry Potter would have blown up as much as it did without Ooh. those movies. Okay. Oh, that's a huge part. I you, Harry Potter is huge, too. 100%. No, there, yeah. were, there were definitely other media things that were helping in general to push up the idea of... of ex- <laughs> no, but, but, but there was a lot of things in the early 2000s that just... Mm-hmm kind of helped yeah um like branch out and and make more nerds yeah. or at least the idea of previously thought of nerdy concepts commonplace yes yes i think that um because i, I don't think without the onset of um lord of the rings i don't think without the other three things we mentioned and i don't think without um harry potter actually now that yeah. we bring that up yeah um that for instance, uh, the MCU would have blown up. Yep. Because, I mean, comics were doing fine in the 90s. Mm-hmm. There was a weird bit of different slumps. It was still not hit or miss. It still wasn't mainstream. And then it started to really pick up in the early 2000s. Mm. Um, like around the, the when the comic version of Marvel Civil War things was coming out. Yeah. Um, and it started to gain more traction. But I don't think that without the other things we mentioned mm-hmm. that there would have been as much appetite for yeah things like that oh yeah i, I think, agree i think that i mean and again there, there was a lot of other fantasy things coming out in the early 2000s yeah in the late 90s but yeah. it you need it's kind of getting the cultural climate right yeah and willing to accept it yeah. and i think that Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings moved things miles. Yes. Um, and I think that, I didn't even, as soon as we said it, 
Harry Potter also did. Yes. Yep. I agree 100%. Um, and that made me think back to... Harry Potter got a whole other generation of people reading when the internet was popular. Yeah. Uh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> um, yeah, as I was saying, it, it, that made me think back. Um, what was the major franchise that came out? Major, huge, nerdy franchise that came out in the late 70s, early 80s when the first big D&D boom happened. Not Star Wars. Yep. Uh, and actually, um, Lord of the Rings touches on that a lot. Yep. I'm sorry, not Lord of the Rings. Um, Stranger Things. things. Yep. You, how did you... Yep, okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> Stranger Things touches on that a lot. Yep. Uh, 77, Lord of the... Um, why do I keep doing that? I don't know. Um, Star Wars comes out. And then I think it's like 81 and 83 are the next two movies. Mm-hmm. Henry would know. <laughs> I'm I'm I just looked this up actually while we were watching Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Fair. Because I want I wanted to know which movies they would have been able to have seen at that point. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> I, the the fact that Stranger Things exists right now. Well, well, that's later. We're almost there. We're real close. We're real close. We're, we're, we're almost there. We're, we're real close. <laughs> we're almost there. Um, I got excited, but no, you're right. Yeah. Star Wars came out. Made an appetite for sci-fi. Yeah. I'm not, not that Star Trek didn't, but it no, because wasn't because Star Trek was. It, it right. was. It Star, was for years already. Star Trek was happening and probably helped the appetite for Star Wars. Yeah. But at the same thing, Star Wars again was one of those things that kind of it broke ran, through. It broke through um, barriers that other sci-fi maybe wasn't quite able to do. Because although it was sci-fi heavy, the plot wasn't is. I mean, isn't isn't it just like Hamlet or something? Um, People have compared it to like other. Well, is it uh, like? I mean, specifically, um, A New Hope is just the hero's journey, right? Right. So I mean, that's just it's just Rocky. Yeah, we we learned a the hero's journey class in English in high school, whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, Lion King's Hamlet, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 yeah, just the, you know, the underdog, zero to hero, you know, story. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, and I, and I know sci-fi versus fantasy, right, is, is a whole other thing, but that breaching and breaking through to non-traditional nerds, I guess. Yeah. Um, sense that happens in Star Wars, like because of Star Wars, mm-hmm. uh, I think that also helps with that growth of D&D at that time as well. That makes a lot of sense, I think. Right? I, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know 100%, but... like, no, but like it, I, it, it, Somebody with a lot sense. more resources and time and knows stats better than us could probably try and see a correlation here. Yeah. But we're just going to fuck around and find out. Yeah. And I think that that helped. And then I think... Yeah, with the the general appetite that was started with kids into Lord of the Rings coming out in the early 2000s. Yep. Kind of helped open up the gateways for the next boom yep. that allowed Skyrim yep. to, to blow up, yep. which in turn allowed Game of Thrones to blow the fuck up. What uh, year did Game of Thrones come out? That's hard. Okay. Um, I, I think it was like 2012, 2013. Okay. The books came out way earlier. Yes. But the books weren't what was going to, to do what it did. No, no. It was huge, but with people who were already reading fantasy. Right. Like it was a very well selling and from my understanding, very good fantasy series. Sure. But once but, the show came out, yeah. which, again, probably happened because Lord of the Rings came out and blew up, yep. because Harry Potter came out and blew up, yep. and because things like Skyrim were happening, because yep. things like JRPGs and other things that were just kind of popping up and exploding into different facets were happening yep. all over the place. Mm-hmm. The, the reason I asked the year for Game of Thrones is because... Um, 
right around that same time, right? We're talking uh, 12 through 15, maybe, um, uh, is tons of stuff happened. Mm-hmm. Tons of stuff. Um, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things was a little later. It was a, that was like 15, 16? <clears throat> Um, that sounds right. I, I would have to look it up, but I think that sounds right. And then the big one that brought a number of people back, either back or uh, into it, Critical Role. Oh, yeah. No, Critical Role definitely helped. I feel like it wasn't... That's... It's a little tough. Because I, I do think yes. It's 100%. Yeah. <laughs> because they were getting audiences of... Thirty to 40,000 people on a weekly basis. More now. But, but like, but that's, even then, but like in when the, it started... In the, the mid teens. Because I think that it helped and it, and it gave um, an audience that was craving these things something. Yes. Because, like, even if they but, didn't know it was Even just D&D, awareness. Yeah. But, like, I don't think that that happened, like, season one of Critical Role. Well, okay, season one it is did. pretty long. But, like, year one of Critical Role. Uh, it was... Pretty quick. It was pretty early on, um, because even even when they started out, they were uh, originally releasing episodes on an established channel. Because that was back when the Geek and Sundry YouTube channel uh, was really big. Um, I have no idea what that is. Okay, but they had they, they were an established YouTube channel at the time, okay. um, so there was already a fan base there mm-hmm. into geeky nerdy shit mm-hmm. that started watching those early episodes. Um, I mean, I didn't find it until, you know, years later. Um, Same. But yeah, it happened. There was a, a smaller fan base early on. Then, as I said, they quickly grew to like 30, 40,000 people watching them every single week. Mm-hmm. Um, who, maybe some of them played it, played d d or other TTRPGs in the past. Maybe they didn't. Um <laughs> And then with Stranger Things, Mm -hmm. those couple things combined together was the perfect storm to uh, create the big boom that happened with D and D. Yeah, with with Stranger Things and with Game of Thrones. Yeah, Game of Thrones, Stranger Things, Critical Role. Those are the three. Yeah, they're the three big ones. They Mm -hmm. happen. The interest in fantasy is growing. There's uh, a easily accessible um, uh, place where you can find how to play the game uh, or watch people play the game. Mm -hmm. And then there's a hugely popular show uh, where the game is played as a part of that show. Sure. Uh, And like the, 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 the monsters, the big bads are based on creatures. Kind of, kind of right. They're like loosely named after them because the kids need something to, I don't okay. Yes. I, I don't know what first edition Demogorgon did. Sure. I don't think it was bursting through interdimensional walls. I, I couldn't I'm, tell you. I, I, could, <laughs> I could not tell you. Um, actually, I talked about Cole with this at one point. You talked about Cole? I no, I'm sorry. I talked with Cole about this. Yeah. Um, and I was asking him because he, he knows a little bit more about the history of D&D and things. Yeah. And he was saying, you know, I was asking him like because he only watched it all. I think. After the last season came out. Okay. Uh, of what? Stranger Things. Okay. Yes. Didn't watch Stranger yes. Things after the last yes, season. Yes, I remember I remember when he watched it. Yep. Um, and I remember talking with him and I was like, so does, does the years line up? Like, And he was saying, well, actually, I'm pretty sure that the big bad in each season lines up pretty well. With like, okay, first edition big bad, one of the main um, campaigns you would run would run up against the Demogorgon. Hmm. And then similarly, um, they go up against... Uh, uh, why can't I think of this now? Are we talking like further down, like with the most recent? Are we talking Vecna? Is, are we going all no, the way there? No, 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 no. Because Vecna was like um, third edition, I think. Hmm. Um, no. Uh, hive Mind. Um, oh. Um, mind Flayer. Yes. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, okay, well, when was Mind Flare? And he's like, well, no, that actually also, again, lines up 
pretty well. Mm. That's cool. So, like, they, they clearly had a, a taste for it and clearly wanted to, to explore that. Yeah, it was D&D okay. Nerds that created the show. 100%. There's no way that they yeah. have not played multiple campaigns yeah. of D&D. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is, it is definitely Stranger Things, uh, Game of Thrones, and I still give it a good role. Even if you don't agree with me necessarily... I still think those three is the big trio I, that has pushed D and D into the popularity it is today, and allowed for a you know multi million dollar movie right. that totally failed at the box office. Did uh, it? Oh yeah, they lost a ton of movie on that. Well, a so, ton of money on that. But they did way better than any of the other D and D movies that have come out throughout the years. True. This is true. Yeah, um, they lost a lot of money on that. I mean, to just this month. This past month, where Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. Yeah. From some third-party company. I remember hearing about Baldur's Gate 2. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I was never interested. I was always like, that sounds way too complex. I don't want to deal with that bullshit. Fair. I think Baldur's Gate 2 was built on 3.5, I think. That would make sense. I think. I could be wrong, but I think. I don't really know, but like... A Game of Thrones video game. Or I'm sorry. Wow. I'm just. I just did that, huh? Yeah. A, a Dungeons and Dragons video game. Yeah. Um, just one game of the year. And yeah. It's been blowing up, being played by a wide variety of people. Yep. And at this point, it's basically just like playing D and D. Yeah, and I think there's a uh, a different reason for that one. Um, I I do believe. Um, the game is increasing interest in D&D. Mm-hmm. But uh, I also believe that there's a large portion of the audience who is interested in D&D or, or some form of it, but they don't have a way to play. So well, having something like Baldur's Gate 3 exist yeah. is a way for them to play. Right. But... There's a crazy DM shortage right now. So... <laughs> right. But at the same time... There wouldn't be that kind of appetite for this large amount of people to want to play D and D. Yep. If it wasn't for everything else we've talked about. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. And um, yeah, uh, I think there were definitely you know various factors along the way. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I definitely well, like I did earlier, laid out a bit of the the history of my knowledge of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, totally like, you know, the boom in the seventies and eighties, star Wars, Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to say anime, TTR, uh, sorry, uh, JRPGs. And I'm just going to say know. that generally, I mean, JRPGs, I think started it. Yeah. But I think RPGs and, uh, like fancy action games, in general, growing throughout the early 2000s to the 2010s is definitely a contributing factor. Yeah. And we, which which most of the people who made those games loved freaking D&D and magic in the beginning. Yep. It's just like self-perpetuating nerdism at this point. Yep. Yep. Um, and we didn't even touch on board games. Uh, because like the oh, evolution... No. Board games have had a huge boom. The evolution, the growth uh, of board games, the different, um, like, the, the creativity that's going into uh, the newest ones that are coming, right? And, like, mm-hmm. that also incredibly likely a huge factor on D&D nerds as well. And, like, people stepping, like, taking that stepping stone of, oh, we're just going to play a game with the family, right? right? And then, like, oh, well, I mean, d d is just a game with the family. It's just another... Yeah, One and, try. and I mean, I think but, that I think that a lot of D and D is like the barrier to entry. Okay, we're we're all, they're acting it out. You know, I don't think all of the the cultural aspects of being nervous about it are gone. I think there's still a lot of the oh well, you know, I don't want to be trying to role play as something. Yeah, and there's a stigma still. There's definitely still a stigma, but it's also there's degrees of what you're doing with that. Well, you see, Kev. Not, not well, I have glasses. I know, but that's fine. Okay, sorry. It's 
you know, one in the eighties would have said that's why you're a nerd. Uh, True. <laughs> uh, you see, Kev. Not well. I was here to pull one of your little steadfast tricks on you. You were you were gonna try and do a flipsy on me? I was gonna try and do a flipsy on you, but you know what? What? We're done. No. That's it. No. But Rob. We're going to have to come back for it. But Rob. But I want to I wanna know the flipsy trick that you wanted to do. You can do a little kickflip on me. Maybe with a little, you know, 360 pop shove it type of thing, <laughs> you know. One of those. <clears throat> that's, that's about what I remember from playing Tony Hawk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, neither of us, neither of us were built to be on skateboards. No, no, no. But that's about what I remember from playing the Tony Hawk video games. Maybe from trying to work a tech deck once. Yeah, right. <laughs> I used to trade those for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> now you see, Kev. Not well. What we're <laughs> three times a charm. What we're gonna be getting into next time that I have control anyway. The Colt. No. Okay. A Colt. You know, we've already done that. Um, yeah. Is I think there's a little bit more to us getting all into RPGs. Okay. Okay. But you're going to make me wait to find out what it is. I am going to make you wait to find out what it and is. And you're going to make all these beautiful people who have listened to us. Yeah, those two people. Also, wait to find out what it is. <laughs> Hey, hey, 2x, say 2x. 2x. Yeah, because that yeah. way the other variable. Oh, it's change. exponential. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's not. But but next time, and until then, Kevin loves you. I do. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>